What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today, we will be looking at the Type 10 AG Paris Taxi. Now this model kit is from my own personal collection, however... But you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. The Renault AG1 car first appeared in 1907. Due to the strength and reliability of these cars from 1908 to 1914, they became the most popular taxis in Paris. On September 5th and 6th, 1914, 1,300 of these taxis transported 6,000 French soldiers from Paris to the Battle of the Marne. As the French army had almost no dedicated troop transport vehicles, General Galilani had commandeered Parisian buses and taxis. Because of the rapid troop deployment, the French soldiers stopped the German offensive. The Renault went down in history as a taxi that saved Paris. The Battle of the Marne was the last Western European conflict of World War I fought on open ground. Trench warfare would become the new rule of war and would last until 1918. This model kit is a scaled up version of ICM's 135th scale World War I French taxi seen here. The side of our box shows an illustration of the taxi from the front view and the side view, as well as the rear view of the taxi. On the adjacent side of the box, ICM has provided a write-up with the history detailing the car. ICM model kits are unique in that the artwork on the box is just really a cardboard sleeve for the thick box board box which is underneath. ICM includes a colorful instruction sheet. All components are in one big bag. There's multiple bags inside the big bag. And a decal sheet. The colorful instruction sheet is written in Ukrainian as well as in English on this side. This column tells you everything you need to know about the Type AG 1910 Paris Taxi. Down below we have Ravel and Tamiya paint callouts in Ukrainian as well as English on this side and a detail of what's going on with the symbols. The instructions also include a full parts map of all the sprues contained within the kit. Step 1 shows the four-piece frame rails going together. The frames include molded on leaf springs in the back, cross braces, and the rails. The completed rails then fit inside the front fenders, which includes fender brackets for one side of the car, as well as the second side of the car, our two-cylinder engine consists of two pieces, right and left hand side, which glue together quite nicely and include the radiator hose molded to the engine block. Here we have the clutch plate gluing onto the spline of the engine. Here we have what I believe is the updraft carburetor with the tube on it, going into our cylinder head with the valves down below, which in turn glues onto the engine block. And this is all completed by a flywheel which glues onto the back of the engine. Our next illustration shows our multi-piece gearbox going together in transaxle. Here we have the top of the gearbox, the axle component, and the drive shaft. The completed engine drops into these two frame rails, C38 and C33. Once that is complete, there is a little hose here, which will glue into the side of the engine. And then our transfer case and rear differential will go up into the flywheel here and mount on the other side of that frame. The entire engine transmission subframe will now drop into the full frame of the vehicle. Our three-piece radiator glues together next. There's these little controls here which glue onto the back firewall and then our radiator glues to the front of the firewall. All of this drops down into our frame behind the engine. We continue in step 14 with our coach bodywork. Here we have the floor pan and one side of the car goes and glues up along this line here to make this one solid unit. Panel 15 shows the glass gluing into the wall of our passenger compartment. Behind that wall we have another wall which has a jump seat on it for the passengers. Our completed wall now slides in and glues to the front of the cab. And from here we can glue on the other side of the cab as well as the back portion. Our front and rear floor pans now glue into the assembly. Our passenger seat and front driver cushion now glue into the body. 
Now we can begin building our roof by gluing the glass into the back panel, then gluing the side panels together and gluing the roof over the top of the entire assembly. Next, the roof of our cab drops onto the body. Here we have these beautiful three-piece doors. We've got an outer, our glass, and the inner panel. And this strap is for adjusting the height of the window. Window cranks are quite an unheard thing of back in this era. Our doors now glue onto the side of the cab, as do our Landau irons and the front panel for our driver. As we see in these drawings, our two-piece driver's seat will glue together and then glue to the floor of the front of our car. We have our other door here, and that will glue in there, as well as the Landau iron on this side. The entire body assembly can now drop onto our chassis assembly. Our two-piece exhaust system will glue together here, and then attach to the chassis here. Our rear leaf springs glue onto the back, and here we have C21 is our steering column, which goes through a hole and attaches onto the bottom. Next, we have the brass handrails, which glue from the body to the front part of the seat, and our Renault distinctive hood will now drop over and cover our engine. Next, we have an engine pan, which will glue to cover over the entire engine assembly. Here we have our front axle and tie rod, which glue together as a unit, and then drops down onto our springs. And here we have a transmission cover, which will cover up the back end of the transmission. Our two-piece differential with drive shaft now glues together. Our differential will drop down onto the rear springs, and our front steering arm will now attach to the front of our tie rod. Our front spoked wheels press into the rubber tires up front, and for the rear we have the brake drum, the spoke wheels, and the rubber tire all pressing together. Cars of this era generally only had two brakes in the back. Our wheels are now pressed onto our axles, and this appears to be the same sort of format that Monogram uses to lock in their wheels, so make sure you have all the seam lines removed from these areas. Our next assembly is the parking brake and gear selector, which will glue together and become a unit. Here we have a four-piece horn for our taxi, which includes right and left-hand side tubing, our horn bulb, and our horn bell, which all glue together to make up one unit. Our horn, gear selector, parking brake, and steering wheel now all glue onto the body. Here we have our light for the back, as well as our spare tire and ring, which all glue onto the body. Back in this time period, roads were really rough, so you needed a spare tire mounted to your cab. Here is a nice fold-out roof for our driver. This includes a two-piece frame, which drops onto the canvas cover. The final assembly then connects to our passenger compartment. Our final components consist of the two lanterns for the front of the car, as well as a taxi meter box, all of which glue onto our body, as well as the crank for the front of the engine. This is an illustration of what our taxi should look like once everything is completed. And on the back of our instruction sheet, we have a paint guide to show you exactly how these taxis looked back in 1910. The parts trees in our Paris taxi count up to five, and this is the first one we're going to look at with the frame rails and the hood. We also have our rear differential in here, as well as our engine components, steering wheel, flywheel, and a lot of the lights and other components that we need to begin making up this kit. Taking a look at our hood, you can see how crisp those lines are on there as well as the nice detail on our differential. And that flywheel is quite unique. Every rivet on the frame is there. And if we turn it underneath, you can see the real absence of mold marks compared to other kits. Here we have our body and interior components for our coach, as well as some of the engine covers. You can see the nice wrinkle effect on the side panels as well as on the roof panel. Again, the detail on these parts is quite superb and very clean looking. Here's more testament to ICM's clean, superb molding practices. As you can see on these front fenders, you have the rivets. And again, look at those nice lines on there. The radiator is excellent. The doors look right. And underneath, we've got our pan and the floor and the front. Also all unique and excellent looking components. 
Our next parts tree here shows some of the pipes, the firewall, the cover for the driver, the front of our cab, and another railing. Detail is quite crisp on these parts, and again, very nice and very clean. The last of our gray components include the wheels and our rear brakes, as well as the spare tire carrier. And look at that nice bolt detail on the rims. Our glass panels for our model are pretty straightforward. They are simply flat. We have our rear window, our side windows, and the windows for the front of the cab, as well as the glass for our lanterns for the front and the single lens in the rear. Our tires are also generic. They are there and there. We have one for the spare, and there is a little bit of a tread pattern just on the ring. Here we have the decal sheet for our ICM 1910 Paris Taxi, and as you can see we have three different license plates, as well as decals for our meter box. And that completes our look at ICM's Type AG 1910 Paris Taxi model car kit. Now if you've built this model kit in the past, we want to see your pictures of your build-up on our Facebook page. I'll leave the link in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review of our Type AC 1910 Paris Taxi Cab by ICM. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, Happy model building!